cleanup of the East Tennessee Technology Park. Workers will demolish 6.5 million square feet of facilities and structures. That's the size of 113 football fields. Add in radioactive and chemical contamination from 40 years of uranium enrichment activities that supported both nuclear weapons production and commercial fuel development. That's what the Department of Energy and its cleanup contractor, UCOR, face as they clean up the World War II era site. Deactivation crews, predecessors to the demolition team, have removed contaminated equipment and piping and other hazards that cannot be disposed of with building debris or pose unacceptable risk during demolition. We've removed all the hazardous materials out of the building to include light bulbs and light ballast and mercury gauges and all the asbestos out of the building that we could possibly get to and we have made it ready to do an open air demolition so that if you do by chance have some dust come out of the building it's not going to be a hazardous material that will affect the environment or the public. In the demolition phase crews are pulling down the structure, disposing of debris and stabilizing the site to meet final regulatory requirements for closure. For nuclear facilities demolition begins when a building has been declared criticality incredible. Criticality, or crit incredible, means all materials that could cause an uncontrolled nuclear reaction or criticality have been removed and the building is condemned. When condemned, humans can no longer enter the building. What was hands-on during deactivation has become the work of heavy iron. The takedown machine we have here, this 1200 Hitachi, is the main machine we use for takedown. All other machines are support machines. Sounds easy, right? Images of massive equipment smashing concrete and steel come to mind. Very precise equipment to be able to take the pieces of the building down. You don't just see the big explosives. You don't see the big wrecking ball that has, that does a lot of debris generation and things like that for the dust. So this actually is a very controlled, very safe way to bring a building down, a PASCAT 2 facility. One look at the demo field and you begin to grasp the enormity of the task and the bodies involved. It takes a lot more than just the guy taking the building down. There's a lot of stuff going on. Supporting uh, the demolition here on our side of the house, excluding the disposal cell, we will have somewhere around 125 people that is supporting this operation. the heavy equipment operators take center stage. I've seen demolition projects that don't use a high type reach type of equipment here. Uh, this has the opportunity to come at it from above instead of trying to reach up to it. So if you're reaching up to it and you're cutting up pieces of equipment, the debris from the building has a tendency to follow that arm right towards the operator, right? So it's not nearly as safe, it's not nearly as controlled, uh, that high reach equipment allows you to get a lot higher and a lot more controlled than a normal piece of excavation equipment that general industry uses. Whether operating ultra high reach excavators or a variety of other specialized equipment, these craftsmen perform with great skill and precision. You know, you don't just go in there on the high reach like he is. You got to work up to it because it's just experience. He has a very precise capability to reach for a small piece of pipe or a small girder or whatever he needs to cut. It's, it's very difficult. It takes a lot of training. It takes a lot of hands-on experience with that piece of equipment to be able to operate in such a safe fashion. It has to come down like a puzzle, one piece at a time and certain pieces before other pieces. The team is quick to tell you, however, that another expert ensures their success. With the high rates, there's a lot of area you can't see from the cab. It is difficult for him to see the detail he needs to sometimes. We got the spotters for every machine. When I have a spotter, he's just watching my machine and everything around me because I can't see behind me. As a spotter, I am the primary person that he is talking to. I'm looking for anything unsafe, top priority, and anything that he may not see that I do, I let him know. It helps when you're a spotter if you've ever run equipment, and I have, and you have to kind of pretend like you're in the cabin machine and kind of knowing what he might need to know that he can't see. As the debris field grows, waste specialists join in the mix. 
this building here has got about 10,000 loads of waste in it. And so we're running a lot of trucks through here. So if anything comes up, we were coordinating between our folks here, the transportation hub over there, the disposal cell at EMWMF, and all the supporting organizations that helps all three projects go. Making sure that we're not getting anything in that load that doesn't belong in that load. For example, maybe a fire extinguisher that hasn't been removed at some point, cylinders, anything that cannot go to the landfill. So he'll watch that. Then as the trucks get loaded, they'll bring them through the stands and then we'll inspect the loads to make sure that he didn't miss anything before we tarp the trucks and send them over to the landfill. At the core of demolition success is safety. The industrial safety hazards are staggering. So we, we don't ever want to send someone home in a less fit condition than they came to work that morning. So that's our number one aspect of the job. It, it, it's even more important than number one priority it is the core portion of our job. We got a safe crew. We got VPP status and we're proud of it. The Project Safety Corps is fortified with intensity, passion, skill, and teamwork. Oh yeah, and a little fun. I've been good at tearing things up, you know, pretty much all my life. I get to get paid for it. Let's get ready to crumble! All right.